All right, now notice on this problem it's already factored out. So instead of it being in standard form, this one's already factored. Now something we haven't talked about yet is called a multiplicity. Anytime it's factored out into parentheses and you have a 2 as your exponent, that's called a multiplicity of 2. And anytime you have an even multiplicity, that means your graph is just going to touch the x-axis instead of go through the x-axis. So that'll be exciting. And the other amazing thing about whenever it's already factored out is, voila, you already have your x-intercepts. And that's the hard part anyway. So it's pretty much your best day ever. All right, let's do a little end behavior action. Now, if I'm looking at the end behavior what is my highest exponent? Now think about it for a second. Ah, uh, kind of. It's not a 2. Here I have an x, here I have an x, and here I have two x's because it's squared. So there is 1, 2, 3, 4. Check that out. So my highest degree here is a 4. So what's my lead coefficient? It's going to be a negative. Okay, so what we actually have here is our leading coefficient term is we have a negative x to the fourth. So the fact that it's negative means you're going down and the fourth means in the same direction. So down and down. That's going to be our end behavior. Cool. Now let's do a little y-intercept action. This is not in standard form, as you very well can tell, but it's still the same concept. I have zero in some number. So even if it's already factored, you're still just plugging a zero in for the x's. It's still f of zero is negative zero minus one, zero minus three, and zero plus two squared. So f of zero in this instance is a negative times negative 1 times negative 3 times 2 squared. So f of 0 is going to be 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12, times negative 1 is positive 12, times another negative is negative 12. Woo wee that's a lot of positives and negatives you got going on there. So I actually have the coordinate point of 0, negative 12. Now my graph over here only goes to 10. So we're going to throw a couple more lines down there and we're going to make it a 12. So I have tick mark and tick mark. So I'm going to make my point at 0, negative 12. Cool. Now let's do the x-intercepts. And on this graph, it is way cooler to do the x-intercepts because you don't have to do the p divided by q factoring business. You can just jump right into this thing. So I know my x-intercepts as I set this equal to 0. So if I have 0 is equal to a negative x minus 1, x minus 3 and x plus 2 squared. The kicker to this problem is the fact that x minus 1 is to an odd exponent. It's like it's to the first power. So whenever I have my point x equals 1, because remember you have x minus 1 equals 0. When you add 1 to both sides you get x equals 1. So when I have the point x equals 1, it's going to go through that axis. When I have the point x equals 3, again, it's going to go through. But over here, with the multiplicity of 2, I have x equals negative 2, and that's just going to touch because it's a multiplicity of 2. So let's recap on this a little bit here and see what we actually have going for us. We have the points 1, 0, and the point 3, 0, and both of those are going to go through the x-axis, and I have the point of negative 2, 0, and that's just going to touch. So let's put these points on our graph and see what we've got going for us. So first of all, I have the point 1, 0, then we have the point 3, 0, so 1, 2, 3, and we have the point negative 2. 
and I know it's going to touch. Now remember, your end behavior is what goes off of your axis, your x-axis. So if I'm looking at this, let's scoot our graph over here a little bit so we can get a little bit better idea of what we've got going for us. My end behavior, remember, it's just touching here at negative 2. So I'm just going to make it where it touches, and then my end behavior goes down. And over here at positive 3, it's going to go through my graph. And again, it's going to go down because of my end behavior. Now let's see what else is happening. I also know this graph is going to go through. If this is a smooth and continuous graph, really what I am looking at is my graph's going to touch. And then we've got a couple of things that we can look at. Notice, right here, I've got some space. Now I've got a y-intercept, but I've got this extra value in between, and I definitely have some extra space over here on my far right ones. This is where our extra points will come in. And if it were me, I would do an extra point here at 1 and an extra point at positive 2. So let's come down here to our section for extra points and make a little t-chart and make that happen. Okay, so remember our extra points are going to be in the gaps. So I want to plug in a negative 1 for the x and I also want to see what's happening on my graph when I plug in a 2. So literally you plug those values into your graph. So if I have f of negative 1 then I'm going to plug that into my function. Let me get it down here where I can see my function a little bit better and we'll plug that in. Okay, so we have a negative 1 goes in place of all of the x's. So a negative, negative 1 minus 1 times negative 1 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 2, the quantity squared, and solve for that. So f of negative 1 here is going to be a negative times negative 2 times negative 4 times a 1 squared. So we know that it's f of negative 1 is going to be uh, 8. 4 times 2 is 8, and then negative sign, so I get a negative 8. So we now have the point negative 1, negative 8. Cool. Now let's plug in a positive 2. So f of 2 here is going to end up being a negative 2 minus 1, 2 minus 3, and 2 plus 2 squared. I'm going to scoot my chart up a little bit here so we can see what's going on. And I now have f of 2 is now equal to a negative 1 times negative 1 times 4 squared, which is 16. So a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So f of 2 is 16. Now that is super deceptive. Because you would think as close as those x values are, that you would have a number that was closer to that. However, when you go to put this on your graph, the point negative 1, negative 8, and the point 2, 16, that's going to make a difference here. Let's zoom in. Okay, so the point negative 1, negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, gives me a point. And I have the point 2, 16. Now notice I put a couple more tick marks over here. So we actually get the point 16. So when we go to graph this line, we have a smooth and continuous graph coming up, crosses through that x-axis, all the way up to pick up that point, and then back down again. So the goal is to have a nice, smooth, and continuous graph. Now this one looks a little wobbly. So do the best you can. This stylus doesn't always make a nice, smooth, easy deal here. So I'll try to go over it again, but no, it's still going too high in the top. But you get an idea, at least, of what you're looking at. And that is your quadratic. Pretty sweet, right? Good. Now try some on your own homework. 
Again, I want to show you the quantity of work that it takes to do this problem, and that is what you need to be showing. So make sure that you're not skimping out on your work. You're actually showing all the work necessary for these problems. Print off several of these, and I'll have some in class too, but print off several of these um, off the website, and you'll be good to go.